Hey, Mike Caruso with the Fisherman Magazine. Today I'm with Aaron Bleeker of Atlantic Marine Electrical Service. These guys install Seakeeper units. Seakeeper units are really one of the most technologically advanced uh, aftermarket products, I guess you could call them, that you could put into a boat to reduce the amount of rocking and rolling a boat does. We're going to do a deep dive here about what, you know, what it takes to install this product in your boat and what the net benefit is. And this is really an incredible benefit when you think about how your boat can be transformed into a very stable platform. So let's dive right in. It's using the gyroscopic principle. The same idea that holds a, a children's uh, spinning top upright or uh, even a small uh, gyroscope that you might get for a science project or something like that, when you, when you try to, to move that gyroscope, it fights you back mm -hmm. in, in 90 degrees to the, to the force that you put on it. Yeah. So essentially that's what Sea Keeper is doing. They're using that principle to, ro to keep the boat from rocking back and forth. Right. Right. Um, so the way that the Sea Keeper works, the best way to describe it is if you look at it like a top, for example, if you spin a top on a table, it wants to hold itself upright because of centrifugal forces on the outside. It's called angular momentum. Big difference here is, is since it's gimbaled on the port and starboard side and it's adhered to the hull, that precession motion that you see here when it's moving back and forth, those angular momentum or those forces are being transferred to the hull. So the best way to kind of view it is, is the boat is a, becomes the top. It wants to stay upright the entire time. But we have our active control, which controls the precession of the gyro. So with that precession rate being controlled, we can control it about an angular momentum per the wave period to keep the boat stable at all times. Okay, so we are now rolling without the sea keeper on. Yep. And you see we've got a pretty pretty good rock. You can see sea keeper just kicked in and it just completely stopped yep. all the motion. If you've ever been on one of uh, a boat with a sea keeper and um, you know done the before and after with it turned on and with it turned off, mm -hmm. it is a a very significant reduction, and we're mm -hmm. talking, you know, 90% reduction mm -hmm. of of rocking. Okay, and so that is uh, that's that's what you're buying, you know, and that's what uh, that's what we're talking about, and that's what Sea Keeper is known for, and that's what no one else does. Mm -hmm. Let's get into the discovery phase right. of you know how you're going to plan out the job. So if you came to me with a particular boat, the first thing we would do is uh, is go and have a, a quick site visit. Uh, unless we've done that boat before, I mean, Sea Keeper has definitely got a vast knowledge uh, database at this point. Yeah. But for the most part, we'll go to the boat. We'll take some measurements of the hull. We want some waterline measurements at the be you know beam and length, of course. Um, we need the displacement weight of the vessel loaded, yeah. um, and then at that point. Then we start fishing for space. Okay. You know, can, is there a hatch that allows us to place the unit without totally destroying access to everything else that you need yeah. to get to in the boat? Because that's important to us. We're installers and we're service. So we're not just going to drop something in that cuts off access to A, the, the sea keeper itself, or B, other things like fuel filters or who knows what else is in, just in the place. Dude. The best thing for us to do is go physically look at it. Once we determine there's space, then we, we send that information that we do, measurements and weight and stuff to Seakeeper. Their team is really good at providing what they call a roll reduction prediction, hmm. which will tell us how many degrees of roll reduction at 80%. Ah, so so you're you're saying um, you know once you've done an initial assessment, you're mm -hmm. getting the folks, the engineers, absolutely, Seakeeper involved mm -hmm. to assist with the planning of the installation. Yeah, well, oh. not not the planning itself. They assist with. Uh, providing data to the customer. Okay. So once we've evaluated your boat, Seakeeper will come back with a graph that says, this particular boat will get you, let's say just for example, 86% at 15 degrees of pitch from side to side. Okay. Uh, and that's a roll reduction of 86%. And they're looking for minimums of 80% yeah. because they want you to have the best possible experience. They don't want boats out there that don't give a wow yeah. when they turn on the Seakeeper. And it really is so if you're going under the deck, uh, which is probably I'd say 80%, maybe 90% of what we wind up doing. We find space below deck. We're looking for structure, hull structure, stringers, things like that, that we can um, adhere to to get the structure we need for the Sea Keeper. Yeah. Um, now there's no, um, you know, Sea Keeper has some very specific guidelines about engineering wise what it should be, but there's there's no real way that they say to arrive to that point. Yeah. So you can kind of, you know, as an installer, you have to take a little bit of your experience and, sure. and just work it into that. Okay. Um, but we've been doing it long enough now that we know what we need structure-wise. Mm -hmm. So there's usually, for us, you know, we usually use aluminum fixtures. 
that we have uh, crafted by Sal Marine is really good right okay. here locally. Okay. We um, grind and to accommodate it, and then we adhere it to the vessel. There's a there's a, a base structure that mm -hmm. um, the Seakeeper unit will sit in. Is that what you're referring to? Essentially, yeah. yeah. It's almost like installing a third engine. Wouldn't mm. you know if you had inboards? Mm -hmm. it, I kind of when people ask at boat shows, sure. I say think of it as putting a new engine in the boat. Right. So it's kind of needs that same structure, that same mm -hmm. fastening. So we look. Smaller boats, we look to put it on center line because the unit doesn't matter whether it's, it doesn't care whether it's off center or not. So, oh, really? Right, it doesn't matter. Um, and we tend to want to keep it from midship to aft in that area. We don't want it too far forward. Um, but that's, for smaller boats, it's important to keep it somewhat centered just because of the weight. Mm -hmm. You know, on, on a 30 foot boat, 400 pounds all the way to port or starboard is going to make a big difference where yeah as it doesn't matter so much and the unit will work harder if it's not you know i, I would think would it would not no the, <laughs> the effect is the same the effect is the same yeah, it's yeah. really it's really interesting and amazing really the physics of it but yeah. center line is where we want it for the most part but we have done them and sometimes you could do smaller units if you have a bigger boat where you couldn't fit one larger unit in the center say you can do two smaller ones off to each side once we get our mounting, we call it a foundation, once our mounting foundation is in place, then the unit will uh, sit on top of that and be uh, bolted to it. Um, and again, Seakeeper has some very specific ways that it needs to be done involving, you know, helicoils and things like that. Some have gone to an above deck uh, leaning post uh, that is actually something that Seakeeper also manufactures. Um, but this is an above deck installation and uh, for some it's the right way to go, is it? Correct. If, if space is a problem below deck, uh, we can often put it on deck and um, it, we can use Seakeeper's um, leaning post assembly or we can actually, there are some boats where we can sort of take certain things out of the existing leaning post mm. to make space for the Seakeeper underneath. Um, the big factor there is that the deck has the structure to accommodate because then you're relying on the deck itself right. to adhere the unit. Right. Um, so the, those things we find out with engineering and you know, we work with the boat companies. And, um, and sometimes, for example, uh, some of the smaller lobster boats, they tend to be very narrow in the back because the, the keel and they, they flare up toward the transom. Right. So they're shallow when you open the deck, yeah. uh, when you look down, so there's not enough room. So we've actually, well, uh, we've actually considered doing on deck with a, a, fish box, a fish box type mounting system over the top mm -hmm. so that they would still be able to have the utility of you know, all their workstation on top of the sea keeper itself. So uh, you know, we can reinforce that deck from underneath at that point very simply. Mm -hmm. you know. These develop heat. You yeah. actually, you literally have a spinning flywheel inside of a, an evacuated which sphere. generates heat, yeah. and so you're drawing mm -hmm. seawater in. Correct. There's seawater that comes through and cools the unit through a uh, glycol heat exchanger system. Okay. So everything that's important in the unit is saved from saltwater exposure. The heat exchanger does all that work. Got so it. we just have a simple. Um, it's almost like an air conditioning type of uh, raw water flow. It's a simple pump with a, you know, pick up a sea strainer and through the sea keeper and over. So there'll be a through hull port. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Both intake and yeah. discharge. The SK2 right behind me here is uh, 414 pounds. Okay. So that unit will do boats up to about the 30, 32 foot range. Okay. And, and that's not set in stone. It also depends on the boat's displacement and uh, some other uh, measurements to do with the, uh, the center of gravity and stuff like that. So here we have the heart of the electrical system for the Seakeeper 2. Um, we start with the battery charger. Uh, this charger will keep the, uh, the Seakeeper batteries fully charged and also compensate for the load while spooling up. Um, we have a, 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 a connection box essentially with an on-off switch and a breaker necessary for the Seakeeper itself. And over here we have a breaker box that has uh, two breakers in it, one for the onboard charger that was already on the boat, and then the second breaker for the shore power for the, uh, the Seakeeper charger. Uh, and that's essentially the, 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 the main part of the electrical system. So here we have our Seakeeper 2 um, at its final resting place. Um, and this is essentially the product com uh, complete, the project complete. Um, basic steps to get to this point, we're uh, assessing the vessel to make sure the thing would fit uh, and then obviously measuring access and so forth. Once we knew we could get it in, we had to prepare the area, um, adhere our mounting uh, plates 
Uh, and then, unfortunately, on this vessel, we had to disassemble. That happens. We had to disassemble the Sea Keeper 2 to get it in place and then reassemble it on its foundation. Um, and that's the basics. Aside from electricals and things like that, those are the, the most important factors that we had to take into account to get this in. Okay, Aaron and his team have completed the installation on the 31-foot Rabalo dual console. It is an amazingly professional job that these guys did. It's clean, they really laid out everything perfectly. When you are considering a project of this nature, it's definitely not a do-it-yourself type of project. You need, it, you need the experts. Uh, Aaron and his team at uh, Atlantic Marine Electrical in Huntington or Freeport, of course, they could go to your location as well. These guys know what they know what they're doing. They've done it before. So if you're considering uh, the Sea Keeper installation, any boat between 23 foot and up are candidates. Give these guys a call. They'll assess the situation and the installation for you guys, and uh, really make an incredible improvement to the performance of your boat. So I'm Mike Caruso with the Fisherman Magazine here with Aaron Bleeker, and uh, give that Sea Keeper a try. Thanks for watching.